<laughs> Whoa, got some issues with my setup. I accidentally hit a camera two button and now it's trying to, how's it going Dallas, man? Um, <laughs> now it's trying to show a second camera. There isn't one to show. Um, coming on here just a little bit early, uh, because why not? I'm just sitting here waiting for time to pass for me to get on here and do this thing. Uh, let me give a quick note. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for your support, for your patronage. Thank you for your attention in these things. Um, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I really do. All right. So today's satanic essay reading and discussion. These, of course, are Hereticus patron rewards. Twice a month, I'm going to be reading an essay and discussing it. Sometimes I'm going to have a guest help me. Other times, it's just going to be myself, all lonely by myself. Uh, either way, hopefully, we're going to learn something or uh, discover something that maybe isn't on the nose when it comes to the essay. We're looking a little bit deeper. We're, we're lifting the hood and peering underneath. We're going to try to, to get to some uh, deeper understanding. And this essay today is going to be a wonderful one for that. Uh, this is from the Satanic Scriptures. This is Every Man and Woman is a Star um, by Magus Peter H. Gilmore. One thing that I love about Magus Gilmore is that he'll take a topic... He'll filter it through um, maybe not so common frame and he'll present it that way. So he'll use metaphors in order to maybe explain a, an idea that is very common and understood in a different way. And that's ultimately what all of these types of shows are about. Uh, it's trying to discern some new way of understanding uh, common themes. That's really what this whole um, idiom of, of uh, study, not worship, comes down to. So uh, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this after the fact, uh, let's get into it uh, right now. These are usually shorter episodes, so we'll just sort of dive in and, and see what happens, see where we go. But again, this is from the Satanic Scriptures by Magus Peter H. Gilmore. The essay is titled, Every Man and Woman is a Star. So let's, uh, let's do this thing. Every man and woman is a star, yet each is of a unique type and magnitude. But how many have the wisdom to honestly recognize their particular roles in the cosmos? Each individual consciousness may be likened to a black hole, a form of gravity lens, but this lens is not one that focuses and pulls in the existing components of our material universe. It is one that pulls in and focuses time. The present is an event horizon, the eternal moment in which we live. It is the domain of our awareness. That which is whirling into the whole is the yet-to-be-realized future, the events that might happen. Amongst this nebular cloud of possibility, which is infinite, with greater particles being more likely probabilities, are the is-to-be's that will become reality once they reach the present. These are the consciously desired future events established by the magical will of the satanic sorcerer. Once these things pass through the now... They fall into place in the linear progression that is the past of each individual. Motile possibility becoming actuality and is frozen as the past. History is thus made. Most people's consciousness is continually focused upon the past. The events of which are like a row of tableau on a foggy plain, receding into the distance and becoming less clear as the present moves farther away. People are thus walking backwards into their future, each step a second in time, one second per second. They are thus rather blind to the events that will soon come into their now and then be locked into their history as past experiences. The satanic magician attempts to turn around, to be hyper-aware, so he is walking forward into the future, and before him is that swirling, smoking mirror of the possibilities that his will attempts to make actuality when they pass through the eternal now. 
The satanic magician projects his visions for his is-to-be's upon this nebula, and they coalesce, begin to take form, and definition of ever greater clarity as they move through the whirlpool and come closer to the event horizon. The important point is that the satanic magician's is-to-be's do not only go through his own event horizon, but through those of certain other individuals as well, to strengthen the reality his vision creates. This is a metaphorical perspective for viewing the mechanisms of greater magic. Time travel is an attempt to look backward and bring those things that have passed and are distant into memory, time, into sharper focus. To leapfrog over interim experiences and experience chosen past moments afresh. Some of these events have a tie to the eternal now of consciousness, which allows the consciousness to jump immediately into these past tableau, skipping all other lesser significant events in one's linear past. The cable that binds the consciousness to these ever-visible mountain peaks is emotion. Emotion apparently comes from the oldest part of the brain, that which was earlier to evolve and is an instantaneous, instinctual, deep evaluation of a situation that is being experienced in the now. It adds what could be viewed as a color or tonality to that situation, so that it is eternally marked in the consciousness and is thus hierarchically ordered in the past. A satanic magician can thus attempt consciously to emotionally tint or harmonize events from the linear past of others, which collectively is referred to as history. By making a time travel journey to them, he may absorb them into his own past through the virtual reality experience, which a ride of time travel can bring to this past event. The gateway which one must open in order to toss his is-to-be's into another's gravity well is that oldest reptile part of the brain that can only be accessed via strong emotion. In essence, the greater magic described by Dr. LeVay is a process wherein one creates these coalescences taken from possible future events and focuses them into one you want to happen. You must feel the need for it to happen with the deeper emotions of which you are capable. And it is by giving vent to this need in the ritual chamber that you open that trap door and throw these is-to-be's out into the future possibilities of other consciousnesses to become a need that will fall into the gravity wells of individuals who have a bearing on the matter, who thus will feel compelled to move their purview according to your will. Of course, lesser magic is simply the day-to-day -day charm and glamour the satanic magician uses to manipulate people into doing what is wanted. In order to be successful at this, first he must be consummately skilled at reading people to be able to determine what it is that they are seeking. But then, the satanic magician must be willing to role-play, to be a chameleon and an actor of exquisite skill to be able to push those buttons and throw those switches into that target individual to make him do as you desire. Some jejun people balk at that, saying, I want people to know the real me. But they fail to realize that most people are far too crass to actually see them, and too narcissistic to even care. They only see what they solipsistically project on others. The Satanist chooses to be Protean, a person of mystery, and only those whom he really cherishes ever get to look behind the myriad masks to see the substance of the individual who sports them. Each Satanic magician naturally adopts a general persona that is often reflective of chosen elements of his essence. He is satisfied with his knowledge of his personal nature and so has no fear in adopting different guises. He is emotionally secure enough not to care that many people who will know him only as the selectively projected facade. And really, why should he care? 
if these folks have done as his, is required by his will. So, my fellow sorcerers, let the rabble observe your passages through their constellations, noting your magnificent gravity and superior stellar magnitude while being dazzled into following the orbits you have plotted for them. The successful satanic magician has a presence that can sweep galaxies of lesser celestial objects in his wake. With his highly attuned awareness, he controls his own destiny by consciously selecting his desired future, motivated many satellites into roles supportive of his sublime vision and self-deification. Uh, that is the essay. <laughs> there is a, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, first and foremost, as I mentioned at the top of this entire thing, uh, ultimately this essay is about greater magic and lesser magic satanic magic that's it that's the entirety of the whole piece it is presented through a frame of ultimately here, here's the flaw ultimately this essay is presented through the frame of a cosmic understanding but is distilled down to simply a black hole and then that's entirely discarded once you start talking about lesser magic so it's a little disjointed as an essay um Uh, I'm not sure I understand. The way it all sounds is like uh, seeping your mind into the collective unconsciousness and poking around within. I'm not, I, I, I disagree in that, in that ultimately what um, Megas Gilmore is saying in this is every single individual is a black hole. The event horizon, the moment, the point in which light can no longer resist the gravitational pull of the black hole is called the event horizon. So each as time progresses in an individual's life, experiences that reach that event horizon is the now. Everything within that has succumbed to that gravity is the past. And everything that will happen, the is-to-be's, is the future of what you, you know, ultimately are going to be dealing with. You know, he's mentioning that most people are looking behind at the past rather than turning and looking toward the future. The satanic magician ultimately is going to look to the future, manipulate others, and so that when time happens in the now, at the event horizon, it's not only affecting you as the individual, but your machinations are affecting other black holes throughout the cosmos as well, other individuals. I find, you know, this sort of tongue-in-cheek reference to human beings being black holes, uh, and I don't, I'm not entirely sure I would like to think that he meant um, that, but there's a bit of majesty in that. Uh, human beings are absolutely black holes we're black holes of emotion we're black holes of experience we're black holes of uh, uh, individuality we try to suck in everything and make it our own our own experiences and he touches on this a little bit later when he's talking about lesser magic and that most people are too solipsistic to even uh, understand the facade that you're presenting as a individual to them they're only projecting on you what they want or what they expect rather than taking you at your own um and in that essence or in that in that frame i should say yeah we are black holes we just suck up everything and destroy it if that were all there was i wouldn't have an issue but the fact is is we as satanists we need to be more than that because a black hole is not aware of what it's doing. It exists solely to digest matter, to swallow experience. We as individual Satanists need to be more than that. We need to have intention specifically about our own lives, but in doing that, affecting others around us and so i'm not entirely sure the metaphor even though i like it because i'm, I'm a space nerd um <laughs> I, I like science uh i like the metaphor of the black hole certainly as it is projected to other individuals but as the as a frame for explaining greater magic maybe it's not the best way of doing that um the 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 phrasing i think is interesting because ultimately he's talking about the fact that we need to look to the future and stop living in the past. You know, uh, the doctor used to reference this idea, you know, don't be forgetful of past orthodoxies. 
but not at the expense of the moment, not at the expense of the now, not at the expense of where you want to be in the future. Ultimately, that's what we need to be doing as Satanists, is, is looking to the future with an understanding that our decisions in this now are going to affect the future, not just for ourselves, but for other people. And so, yeah, it does take a little bit of plotting, a little bit of planning, a little bit of fucking brain matter. We can't just float through life and expect to be called Satanists. Because the truth is, if you're just floating through life, then you're one of the other mindless sheep out there. What makes a Satanist different is that we move forward with intention. That we, we plan and we plot. We connive. <laughs> we manipulate. We are active in our lives and by being active in our own lives we are inevitably manipulating others so again through greater and lesser magic this is is how it happens i do like the idea that he's presenting in this that that greater magic is a way of looking forward and manipulating others before it gets to your event horizon before time comes to your gravity well that's greater magic. That's an interesting way to frame it. I've never really thought about it that way before. Because the truth is lesser magic is always in the now. You can always plan for lesser magic. But it's always in the now. You have to be present for lesser magic to be effective. You can't, you can't prep it. You can't plan it and set it out there and let it happen before it gets to you. You have to do it in the now. Greater magic, on the other hand, is very much a planning. It is a plotting. It is something that you can use to set up events and this is where i think a lot of satanists are going to have a problem ultimately because depending on where you fall in line with this idea of satanic magic with the idea of greater magic as a transmittable force as outlined in the, the standard bible where you fall on that understanding is going to ultimately lead to your acceptance or rejection of essays like this that you can effectively manipulate events before they occur through greater magic i mean personally <laughs> i've always uh accepted greater magic as a uh, psychodrama as as a way of of uh dealing with inner turmoils so that you can then move forward with lesser magic in life i've never thought of greater magic as a way of affecting events before they happen. And even in the Satanic Bible, when they're talking about dynamically transmittable forces through Satanic magic, it's only in reference through lesser magic, which I always find interesting because it's always attributed to greater magic. But if you actually read the text as it's presented, um, it's actually lesser magic that he's referring to. So, I don't know if, it ultimately, does it really matter? I don't know. I don't know. I like to have the conversation because it's such a hot topic between different Satanists. Because it, it is very much one of those things. It, it, depending on where you came into Satanism, kind of tells you where you're going to land with the idea of greater magic. Um, is it something that you can set up for events in the future? Or is it something that it just helps you in your head? And by helping yourself in the head through psychodrama, is that ultimately setting up future events? It really just depends on whether you think greater magic affects other people or just yourself. Um, you're open to the idea of both schools of thought in regards to greater magic. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. How's it going, Wes? Um, ultimately, when it comes down to it, I don't think it matters. Like, it, if you see greater magic as a dynamically transmittable force that is going to affect other human beings, well, fine. But don't just rely on that. You still need to move forward with intention in life. You still need to manipulate the world around you to have your is to be realized. You can't just rely on a ritual chamber and some fucking candles and some, you know, groovy ass music to do your fucking work for you. It's just not how reality works. And as a Satanist, to think that there would just be some simple step like that is a childish way of looking at reality, especially when we're supposed to be pragmatic individuals as Satanists. Um, and so wherever an individual lands on the spectrum of greater magic, I, I don't really care as long as it's not the end to your action. You have to use it in order to have your is to be's realized. 
and then go out there and chase it. Don't just let it, just hope, twist your fingers and hope the cosmos works in your fucking favor. Like, I don't know, so many stupid college fucking idiots that don't like to take accountability in their own lives and just say, well, the universe is going to put me where it wants me. Well, guess what? That's going to be in the fucking grave because that's where the universe wants you. Look at the whole span of existence. Human beings are less than a blip on that. You're going to end up dead with nothing. However, if you take ownership of your life, maybe you can accomplish something in that process, in that little blip that we're going to be around. Um, yeah, wish upon the star and put the hard uh, and put in the hard work. I I kind of like that idea, um, that phrasing, um, because I think that's. I mean, it may be a little bit trite in in the you know wishing upon a star aspect because just by nature of stepping into the greater magic ritual chamber, you are taking a step into ownership. It's just whether or not that ends at you know the sounding the the cleansing of the air with your bell or not. You know whether you step out of the ritual chamber and then do something in order to ensure its realization. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because really what this essay is speaking to is not looking behind you, not focusing on the successes or the mistakes that you've had in your past or the pleasantries that you just momentarily experienced at your event horizon, but it's to say that this ten magician must turn around and must look forward to the future. We must look ahead of ourselves. We must move forward through life planning and understanding and thinking and having intention living in the moment with goals set up in the future and manipulating those other cosmoses those other individuals those other black holes <laughs> in society um i want to play with this idea really quick if i can <clears throat> this idea of black holes because <laughs> up until reading this out loud i'd never really hey stephanie how you doing there um, I'd never really given great thought to the idea that we're all just black holes, even though that is sort of, you know, one of those ideas that, you know, of course we are uh, as individuals. Um, if, if we can accept the, the statement that, yes, every individual is a black hole and we just swallow experience and moments. We don't think about it. We just sort of move through life and just you know, tear through time. People come into our lives and we swallow them and we move past them. If, if we are just black holes of experience, is that our true nature? And if that is our true nature, is the very act of planning outside of that, of trying to manipulate reality outside of that, does that mean that we are not acting within our nature as individuals? That we're trying to break out of that. And is the act of breaking out of that not a foolish idea in and of itself when you're focused on a religion that is supposed to be accepting who and what we are? And so I'm just sort of playing a little devil's advocate, tongue-in-cheek there, with the idea of, as Satanists, we, we like this idea that we are you know, we're carnal creatures that accept who we are as individuals, as human animals. No better or worse than those who walk on all fours. And yet, we do everything we can as Satanists to not just be human animals. Human animals exist at that event horizon through this essay, or just in the now, as we accept reality. They're pure creatures of experience, of reaction, you don't see animals planning for their future outside of bears uh, gathering food for hibernation or, or, you know, similar behaviors. That's not really trying to break free of the natural course that their existence would lead to. And so as individuals, as human beings that are literally breaking the course of nature by manipulating realities, by, by moving forward with ownership and intention of their lives, are we then... Becoming the very thing that we're claiming we're not. We're no longer human. We're no longer natural carnal creatures. We're now something very different. Something that works outside of the natural order of things. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a paradigm in Satanism that, that we just gloss over? we don't ever really question 
and I haven't really thought about it until now, but it, it is very much something that I'm, I'm genuinely taking issue with. And there, there have been a few things that I've had uh, uh, taken issue with when it comes to Satanism in the past, but it's really usually only in relation to the organization and my personal experience as a Satanist, never with the religion in and of itself and our pretext to what we are as individuals. Uh, and yeah, you're right, it is kind of uh, paradoxical. If we truly are just carnal creatures, why are we trying to manipulate everything and, and move about with intention and, and trying to separate ourselves from the herd, the pack, as it were? Because that's the natural order of things. We're the alien elite, so then that separates us from the natural order. So then why do we continually claim that we are just carnal animals, no better or worse? We're literally different. We're separating ourselves. We have to be able to see that as a difference, right? Right? So we have to stop pretending. We can't have it both ways. We can't be a, a natural carnal animal and an enlightened individual moving forward with intention and ownership of our own lives. We're still at the mercy, ultimately, of the chaos of the universe. And yet, we're worried about things like fucking clothes and transportation and money, which no other fucking uh, creature on the natural order of any planet would ever consider you know you think of it as, as far as evolution is concerned we're at the very end of what could possibly be our, our very extinction through our behaviors of breaking with the natural order of the universe or worse a you know, fucking meteor hits our planet and ends it all anyway but like i don't know like I, i'm having i'm having one of those crazy thoughts like uh, are we are we what we claim to be as Satanists? Or are we something very, very different? And by the very nature of us ironically changing our nature, can we still claim to be a part of it? I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyway, um, <laughs> great essay. Great essay. Uh, I, I don't really think about this stuff very often. And so it's, it's always fun when it, it is, you know, it just sort of comes up in my head, uh, after reading this stuff, <laughs> time to call Bruce Willis. Don't want to close my eyes. <laughs> don't want to fall asleep. Uh, yeah. So let me know what you guys think. Are we in harmony with nature or is the fact of being a Satanist in direct opposition to harmony with nature? Um, is our very nature the very thing that sets us outside of nature? <laughs> right? Huh. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure where I land on that. I'm going to have to think about that for a little bit. Um, thank you guys so much. Again, this is uh, for the uh, Hereticus patrons of Speak of the Devil. I appreciate you guys uh, so much. Thank you for your patronage. And thank you for tuning in live for those of you who are tuning in lives, um, live. Live. Yeah, at times when it's beneficial, we are. I agree. Um, I'm going to have to think about this more. We'll have another conversation about this. Because <laughs> <clears throat> there's uh, diametrically opposed concepts within Satanism that once you do start kicking the tires, once you do start lifting in the hood and looking underneath it, you kind of do have to question I think it's healthy. Satanism itself welcomes it. Question all things. So let's do that. Hmm. It's interesting. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening. And hail Satan. <laughs>